episode, we're going to talk about food safety regulations and standards. Start off with the FDA, Food and Drug Administration. They uh, make an outline for federal recommendations for food safety rec uh, uh, regulations uh, for the whole industry. Uh, they base that on input from a conference of food, prote food, food protection. And um, although the FDA makes these recommendations, um, they are given to the states, but they're not required to uh, to use those recommendations. They can use them just as they are, or they can modify them. So your state and local health codes, most of them are written at the state level. Now each state can decide whether or not they wanna adopt the FDA food code or they wanna modify it. So what happens is they take the food code and what they do is like the local health department, so the Connecticut Department of Health will look at the FDA recommendations and they'll decide whether or not they're going to accept it as it is, or they're going to modify it to fit their state. And examples of that are if you were in Maine, uh, live lobsters is a huge thing. And there's probably a lot of stuff that the FDA has to say about the proper handling and holding of lobsters. But if you're in Nebraska, the chances of you handling and holding live lobsters is really diminished. So Nebraska may not have as many stringent rules as somebody who is on the east coast of, of, uh, of the United States in New England who has lobsters right off their shore. Uh, same thing applies with uh, shrimp. In Louisiana and Mississippi, they're going to be catching fresh, uh, fresh shrimp and handling it in a much different fashion than you would if you're in Iowa where there's probably no fresh shrimp at all. Um, same thing. Uh, somebody who's catching snapper in Florida and grouper, and they have to worry about the microorganisms that come along with that. You're not going to worry about that in the state of Michigan, where predominantly it is uh, freshwater fish that served in Michigan. So the FDA writes the recommendations, and then each state will look at those recommendations and either adapt it, adopt it exactly the way it is, or they'll modify it to fit their state. Uh, inspections and enforcement. The state. Um, what happens is the state writes those, uh, the state writes, writes those rec not the, the, the actual uh, laws the way it's supposed to be. And um, the state usually does not inspect individual restaurants, the local health department. Um, in this, this case, we're in the state of Connecticut, so here's the, the state of Connecticut seal. They'll write the, rec they'll, they'll write the regulations and then the, the, each individual city or each individual um, county will enforce They'll do the inspections and then they'll enforce the regulations. The state health department will investigate and uh, do inspections of uh, hospitals, nursing homes, uh, medical uh, 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 facilities, that kind of thing. And uh, they're a lot more stringent than the local health department is, um, but they both are doing the exact same job. <clears throat> Inspection process. Uh, required by all operations. Usually, if a regular restaurant, you're going to have uh, at least twice a year. Um, and the good thing about it is it lets you know if you're hitting the mark. It lets you know if you're hitting the minimum. Now, you don't want to hit the minimum. You want to aim way above the minimum. But at least you know after they do this inspection whether or not you're, you're hitting the minimum amount that you need to do uh, to make sure that the food is served and held and maintained safely. Uh, inspection guidelines. You can ask for identification, right? You cannot, if somebody walks in and they say they're from the health department and they provide identification, most times they're going to have a clip right onto their, they're going to have a lanyard, they're going to have a clip right on their, on, their, on their neck, and they'll be more than happy to show you their, their credentials. Um, if they show up and they have it, you cannot refuse them. doesn't matter how busy you are, what's going on, you can, you can let them in. Now, you don't have to stop doing what you're doing and walk around with them. Um, I kind of like to do that so I can see what they're saying and I can build a relationship with that person. Um, you can just say, okay, here's the kitchen, have at it and go about your business. That's totally up to you. My suggestion is that you go and walk around with them um, and again, build that, that relationship with them. And then you can answer, maybe they're going to write something down and you can say, well, that's, that's the way it is because of this. And they might not write it down because of that. Um, inspection guidelines. Okay. What you want to do is definitely cooperate with the inspector. Whatever they ask you to do, you go ahead and do for them. Just like before, you can't you can't exclude them from your place. The last thing you want to do is start yelling at them and getting an attitude because they're there. 
that won't help you at all. They, they're they they're right in that report. They can be nice or they can not be nice, depending on, on how you act. Um, take notes so you know what they're saying and you know uh, what needs to get uh, t- taken care of. Um, and keep the, uh, the professional, uh, the relationship professional. If it is a good looking young lady or a good looking gentleman, please don't ask them out on a date. Um, be <laughs> professional at all times. Don't uh, do anything that, that you wouldn't normally do to a customer. You know, act a- as a professional at all times. Inspection guidelines uh, keeps on going with uh, be prepared to uh, give them all the records that they're looking for. Um, sanitation logs. A lot of times they want to see if you're if you're uh, monitoring the, the temperature of your dishwashers, if you have a, a cleaning schedule and it's, it's going to be followed. Uh, cooling food log. So if you make soups in big, huge volume, I used to make one place I was working 10 gallons of soup a day, and it wasn't for tomorrow. It wasn't for today. It was for the next day. So what we had to do was um, we had to when we started the the, the refrigeration process at 1:35. You know, you have two hours to get it to 70, and we would document that. And then another four hours to get it from 70 down to 41. We would document that. So we document the starting temperature uh, when it hit uh, four hours, or when it hit two hours, when it hit four hours, or if it hit um, 41 before the four hours. Either way, it was all documented. And daily temperature log. We used to uh, log log the um, cook to temperature, held that temperature, and serve temperature of all the food. Again, it was a uh, healthcare situation, so they were, you know, the health, the state department was a lot more stringent on those things. But be prepared to have all that information ready. And if you scramble and you don't have that, or if you look like you're trying to make it up, they can see that. If you if you do the right thing at all times and you make sure that you have all the documentation ready at all times, I could, in a moment's notice, they could walk in. I could pull out my drawer, and there was three months of temperature logs, three months of sanitation logs. Uh, three months of cooling logs all right there and they could see that it was you know month by month by month and whatever you want to see boom here you go um also be prepared to uh, show them your surf safe certification um, it is mandated by the state that you have at least one person who is surf safe certified on every shift in every place so if you're open from 6 a.m and the shift the first shift is six to two, uh, you have to have at least one person that's serve safe certified to make sure that they're maintaining the, their their uh, their uh, sanitation. And then they go home at two. You need another person coming in that's going to work from two to ten. Another person that's going to come in from ten o'clock on. And then also make sure that you have your uh, food handlers permit uh, for your actual restaurant uh, ready to go. Show them. And usually you're going to have that posted, but make sure that it's not only is posted but it's up to date. Um, discuss the violations and the time frames for correction and, um, act on all deficiencies noted in the report. So what's going to happen is they're going to come through and they're going to uh, do an inspection and, uh, they will document everything that they find. They will, uh, they have a paper and they'll go down the paper and there's points, um, deducted for, uh, violations. Um, if you have a, a number of four point violations, which is usually a chemical thing or um, something that has to do with uh, contamination, um, then what they'll do is they'll tell you, you have this many days to correct it and we're going to be back. Um, I put this up here because the difference between a correction and corrective action and uh, preventative action. So uh, correction is, hey, the place is on fire. Let's put the fire out. Uh, corrective action is um, what caused the fire, how can we prevent that from happening again, and then preventative action is uh, stop the firing from happening in the first place. So an example of that is that let's say they come in unannounced and you have a bottle of bleach sitting right in the middle of the line on, on, on the hotline itself, on the counter where the cutting boards are. Total violation, cannot have bleach anywhere near where you're, where you're reducing the food. Um, so they write you up and they write it down. They say you have to do that. When they come back, they, you know, the, the corrective action is immediately go and grab the bleach and take it away from that, that area. But they don't want to see that. What they want to see is that you have a removed it and B labeled uh, a place and made it very clear where that place is. Big signs, all chemicals are held here. Uh, do not bring out chemicals if food is, is, is exposed. And then they want to see some kind of documentation that you did training with your staff 
not just one staff, all staff, um, and talked about the proper uh, the proper location where we store our chemicals. Those are all really important things. They not only do they want to see that you fixed it, but they want to see that you put preventative actions in place so it won't happen again. Uh, the inspector could close your place for the following things: uh, lack of some significant re uh, refrigeration. So I have a little refrigerator here. This is a Susie Homemaker refrigerator. And your chances are of you working that, using that in the food service industry are slim to none. But it's just to show that, hey, if your walk-in cooler goes down and the health department walks in and they see that you're, you've got everything jam-packed into a, a refrigerator like this, they can easily shut you down because you have lack of refrigeration. There's no way you can refrigerate everything that, you're, that you need to hold for service. And by, by not being able to refrigerate things, they're going to be in the danger zone. And therefore, you can make somebody very sick. And we do not want that. Uh, next thing you can do is um, if there's raw sewage backing up in your facility, uh, the sign here says uh, the right steps to take after raw sewage backs up. You can see where the wall has been removed uh, because the raw, the raw sewage got on there. There's no joke when you have raw sewage come back up into your place. Um, this is the reason why we have those air gaps. So if it does come up into your place, it goes on to your floor. It does not go up into your sinks and into your um, into where you have clean food. Um, but if it's bad enough, the health department can come in and shut you down. Um, inspector can close you down if you have emergencies such as a fire or a flood. Uh, I put this up here because this is Mr. Barbecue and Miss Fried Chicken. Uh, but you can see there's a fire truck and you can see there's a big hole in the, in the ceiling. Um, chances are they're not going to open up tomorrow. Uh, but the health department could come in. There are some people that might want to throw a tarp over this and try to open the restaurant. Or you can see the poor chef, he's standing on top of his his, uh, his chair and the water is as high as the bottom of the chair. Chances are real good the health department is going to shut you down. You're not going to be able to serve on that day. Uh, but those are two reasons why they could uh, shut you down. If the inspector can, uh, can also close you down if they find a significant pest infestation. If they sign, if they find huge signs, dead animals, dead rodents, um, cockroaches everywhere, they can close you down because those, all those insects and, and the mice and the rodents, they can carry a disease and easily make somebody sick. Um, they can also close you down for a power outage or a temporary loss of uh, water service. Uh, usually, this kind of thing happens if you have a hurricane or if you have a tornado. Um, they don't. The, the, they, if they know that your your area lost power for five days, um, you can't open up and serve on, on the sixth day because unless you can prove you just got food in, um, because the chances of that stuff being refrigerated uh, the entire time are slim to none. Um, they also won't let you uh, operate if you don't have uh, running water. You can't properly clean and sanitize if you don't have running water. Um, a lot of places. Uh, Again, uh, the healthcare facility that I was at had emergency generation uh, that was built in. It was part of the deal. The residents lived there, so we had no choice. So as soon as the, the power would go off, there would be a 15-second delay, and then the, the emergency power would kick on. And we also had in place um, a water service that was guaranteed if we lost power or if we lost water, they were guaranteed to deliver water within deliver water within three hours of us calling them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So in those situations, you'd be allowed to stay, stay open. If you're, if you're a freestanding restaurant, a mom and pop place, chances of you having that kind of uh, system in place, pretty slim. Inspector can close you also if there's clear uh, uh, evidence of foodborne illness. Foodborne illness is not fun. Um, if you get it, trust me, you will not feel good. Um, if you have more than two people, two or more, that's considered a foodborne outbreak that gets sick from the same item, um, then they can come in and certainly shut you down. Um, Well-managed operations have um, frequent inspections, self-inspections. And the good thing about a self-inspection is you go through and you analyze what you're doing, and hopefully you can catch the mistakes that you're making before the health department actually walks in. If you have everything in order and you can show them, well, we do an inspection once a week and these are the things that we found. Here's the things that we've worked on. They love that. And it also makes your life much easier. The thing that drives me crazy is I try my very best to do everything right all the time. 
So when the health department walks in, I can just simply say hello uh, and welcome and, and give them a walk through. Um, I don't, I don't want people scrambling because the health department walked in. Somebody walked in with a shirt and tie. Oh my gosh, that must be the health inspector. So everybody's running around trying to find hats. Everybody's running around trying to get hair nets. Everybody's running around trying to label everything. If you are always wearing your hat, if you are always doing the proper things, if you already have your documentation, if you are writing and uh, labeling and dating everything as you prep it or as you cook it, as you put it in your walk-in coolers, you don't have to scramble. And trust me, they're not idiots. When they walk in the door, if they see everybody screwing around like little mice, they know that there's something up. They know you're not following the guidelines. Follow the guidelines and you don't have to scramble. Uh, the benefits of a self-inspection is um, you have safer food. Uh, you improve the quality of the food. You have a cleaner environment because your uh, employees are more, um, are more attuned to what's going on because they know you're going to come through and inspect it. People... My wife has one thing that she always used to say when we worked together. People would do what's inspected and not what's expected. And it's true. If they know I'm going to come and look that it's, that it's, that it's clean enough, they're going to do it because I'm going to come and look. If they just figure, eh, I expect them to clean it, they're, no, they're not probably not going to do it. And what will end up happening is you'll have higher inspection scores. Um, again, when I was working at Doncaster uh, Healthcare Facility, we did self-inspections on a regular basis. Um, and there was a couple, there was more than a couple of benefits uh, with that higher, uh, inspection when they would walk in, I would present them with that. And, um, what they told me, the lady from the health department loved us and she would bring in new health inspectors to show that health inspector, our facility and say, this is what you're looking for. This is the way it should be done. And that's the relationship you want to build with that health, with that health inspector. You also never want to assume you're going to get the same health inspector. I was working at one place where I was the corporate chef for a large uh, corporation. And uh, when I got there, the place was really a mess. And so I straightened it all out. And I got it all, all up to speed. The health inspector was extremely happy with the way everything was going. And uh, at this particular place, it was a business. And uh, they had patents on the wall. And uh, so you couldn't just walk in the back door. It wasn't, it wasn't accepted. When you came in, there was security at the front gate. And when you had to tell them where you were going, and then security would contact, would, would contact the, um, the main entrance. And the main entrance would then escort them to the kitchen. Or they would call me and say, you have a health inspector here. Can you come down and get them? They weren't allowed to just walk through the building. So I said to... Uh, the person and this lady had come uh, four times in a row. So it had been two years. I had had four inspections with the same person. I said, listen, I have nothing to hide. So from now on, I'm going to tell them downstairs, you can just come on upstairs. You know how to, you know where to go. So when you come in, just sign in and come upstairs. So, you know, six months go by, I get the call from the, from the front desk, the health, the health department's here. I said, okay, no big deal. And I went about my business, assuming this person's going to walk up the stairs. She didn't. 20 minutes later, they called and said, she's still waiting. And then I went down and I apologized. And I actually had to say to her, please call the other person in your office and, and, and ask them, you know, if I did say this, I did say, please. And then she did. And she, she found out that that was the case. Uh, but she was super hard on me because she thought I was trying to hide something. She thought I was trying to tidy things up at the last possible second. And I wasn't. I was just doing my job. Um, so the bottom line, oh, the other thing, too, was... Um, when I had built that relationship and they would bring the person in to investigate um, or to, to bring in new people to do an inspection of our, our place because they wanted to show them the right way. Um, we also received as, as, uh, as a facility, we received an award from the West Hartford um, health department uh, because of our uh, exemplary work. So uh, that gave us notoriety. It got us in the newspaper um, and so that, that is all good, positive stuff. We talked about earlier, um, the cost of foodborne outbreak to a facility. Well, these are also benefits on the other side that if you're doing things the right way and you get acknowledged for that, that can take you to other heights. Okay. Thank you very much and have yourself a great day.